are these people? I've been really fascinated by what our friend the Golden Monarch has been putting together on his Substack. Now, I didn't really know the origins and backstory of Bitcoin. I mean, I've kind of heard about it, you know, and he he covers it here. Golden Monarch has been writing about what bullshit and Ponzi scheme crypto is and taking down and making note of various public figures who have been immersing themselves in crypto. Um, and there's a lot of them. But getting back to, like, the origins, and this starts to really ask some hard questions. And, I, and this is what I really like about this. This was written a couple of weeks ago. And this graphic specifically fascinated me tremendously. All right? So... He asks, is Satoshi Nakamoto, who is allegedly and, and well-known as the founder of Bitcoin. Hey, yes, that is the Golden Monarch. Hey, welcome, dude. And I know you're watching and it's kind of going to be weird and you'll add stuff to it. And that's great. Appreciate you watching. But I really was fascinated with this article. Um, and I, I actually gave, I think I gave you some feedback on either this one or on the Lummis one, saying I wasn't quite clear on exactly who Hal Finney was. So he fixed it. and added some something about it so that i understand what this what this is a little better that's, that's the guy in the um saved by the bell no th see no last week <laughs> last week it was boy meets world all right and, not, and it's not saved by the bell but what he says is real no. quickly let's address an imposing question that has more <laughs> questions than answers who or what or rather was satoshi nakamoto right some people, including Bitcoin Maxis, and I didn't even know what's a Bitcoin Maxi. Oh, it's one of these Max Kaiser dumbasses that believe that only Bitcoin and no other cryptocurrency is has any value, and all the other altcoins they call shit coins, including Ethereum, by the way. All right. Yeah. They all speculate that Satoshi in, Nakamoto. In comparison to the value, it they kind of are, but the value yes. for value system. Mm. You can do it in Bitcoin. Well, Not really. <laughs> Will Bitcoin yeah. fucking go up so I can buy tires? Was Friday's Steve. <laughs> was it? It was great. I love that. Shout out. <laughs> and I'll talk about that later. But the meaning of Bitcoin's anonymity and scarcity, according to these, these Bitcoin maxis, it's so mysterious, so godly, that if, if Satoshi's identity were ever revealed, then the meaning of Bitcoin's anonymity and scarcity, scarcity would cease. Bye to jail, right away. Unless this is a reenactment of the Bible, the Quran, or some other ancient lore depicting good and evil minus <laughs> the greys, Bitcoin and its founders and developers are not that typical, mystical, or unique as many pro-establishment capitalists make it out to be. Going off of what Julian Assange once said about Bitcoin, Bitcoin was at one point the most interesting thing on the internet. Indeed, most interesting and nowadays most exploitable by Bitcoin maxis and capitalist oligarchs who serve their donors from APAC to BlackRock to Israel and so forth. Show me the money! Yeah, they certainly have, and they showed the elections the money so far. Countering what these Bitcoin maxi fanatics and cult-minded individuals think, we have the rational argument of Satoshi Nakamoto not being so special or godly, and the name Satoshi Nakamoto is just a pseudonym for someone or something. There was no actual person with their, that name who invented Bitcoin. For today, this article will explore one Reddit discussion from three years ago where users debated over Satoshi's connection to CIA. And that's where I thought it was really interesting. Following that will be a brief breakdown of a couple notable comparisons between the earliest adopter of Bitcoin, Hal Finney, who is cryonically frozen to that of Satoshi Thanks. Nakamoto. Yes. So the first question is... Like, Go ahead. like Walt Disney. Yes, or Ted you Williams. Know? But I think Ted Possibly. Williams... Head might have exploded. <laughs> like literally. Well, like, like in the Demolition Man, where they, they took... You remember that, right? And he hits <laughs> it with a baseball. Vaguely. Right? 
I believe. Bo I believe. Hal 9000. No, yeah. Dave Burt. No, see. And we got Hal 9000. We had no, no, Dave. I can't, I can't, I can't do that, Dave. Sorry, Dave. I can't do that, Dave. I can't do that. So, over the Bombay doors, Hal. Who's Hal Bombay Finney? Doors. Pod Bay doors. The first thing that commonly comes up about Hal Finney is that he was the first person to adopt Bitcoin. And although Hal Finney, before he passed away in 2014, denied being Satoshi Nakamoto, his background could suggest otherwise. And I mm -hmm. knew nothing about this guy or who he was. And that's why I was like, you mentioned his name. Like, who is this guy? Like, he's interesting. Born in 1956 in Fresno, California, Finney pursued a BS in engineering. He went, to, he went on to develop early video games for Atari, such as Adventures of Tron and Armor Ambush, etc. During, nice. during, right? He was a video game. He was a, he was a video developer, a geek. Mm -hmm. During the early 90s, Finney became a cryptographic act activist who worried about the possibility of governments or institutions spying on citizens. I wonder if Keith McHenry knew him. I'll mm -hmm. bet he did. Alongside Probably. the founder of PGP Software, Philip Zimmerman, Finney would use the software to communicate via bulletin board service, or BBS, as the boomers or the Gen Xers in the, in the chat know very well. Not to be confused with BBLs. No, no, very, mm. very different. Strikingly, the PGP mm. featured an implementation of public key cryptography, uh, a protocol still used for encryptions on blockchains such as Bitcoin. Hmm. So, so there's an image below. Um, it's a little darkened out and you can't really see it well, but you've got a raw file being encrypted, encrypted with a public key, all right, turning into an encrypted file, then sending it via an email or FTP, right? And doing the same thing, how to decrypt a file from an email to a raw file with a decryption key. Yeah. Finally, alongside other cypherpunks, consisting of cryptologists, politicians, yikes, computer scientists, mm -hmm. anyone who valued monetary... Uh, the CIA, the NSA. Well, that's where he's going with this. Anyone who valued monetary yep. decentralization and, pol and privacy, then he was involved in experiments, including the first ever proof-of-work-based currency called R RPOW, or, or, you know, um, RPOW. Um, yeah. The project failed. RPOW. RPOW! I feel like we need we need to get... <laughs> what's his name? Uh, no, keep, keep in mind, the biggest cryptology puzzle is still in the courtyard of Langley. It's a fucking so, Catalina wine mixer. Uh, yes. What I'm sure. The um. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Riggle, that's what I was thinking of. Pow! <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So um so where are we? Proof proof of work. All right. Um the project failed. Yeah. But Finney's contributions later year years later caught the interest of Satoshi Satoshi Nakamoto. Who was the creator of infamous Bitcoin? January 12th, 2009, Finney participated in the first Bitcoin transaction, hmm, receiving 10 Bitcoin from his benefactor. Okay, this is, that's well yeah. documented. Where does this all When was this? To? 2009? Yeah, yep, okay. January, yeah, January yeah, yeah. 2009. Just after yeah. the, the crash. Well, and keep in mind, all this stuff before beforehand is like uh, computer technology at that time and cryptology is skyrocketing as quickly as possible. So you go from, uh, you know, the worst hack you could have is with a, a Captain Crunch whistle, right? With like phone phishing. And then it was like, you know, guys went to jail after that very quickly and came out and started working directly with the CIA, working directly with the FBI, right? Like that was that was the whole white hat, black hat era, you know? So I guarantee you there's revolving doors all over this place. Yes. So, so which I'm sure we're literally about to get to. Yep. And this is where 
Okay, the, the Reddit topic defines and asks, is he CIA? Well, if you break down the words Satoshi in katakana, yeah. in kanji, and in Japanese, right? It's yeah. It's it's a uh, Satoshi means wisdom or sense in Japanese. Nakamoto in katakana in kanji is uh, meaning middle or base yeah. root origin, and it's like base Yakutomi agency plaza. wisdom intelligence middle mm. central. So you literally have like the word middle, all right, in in Nakamoto, all right, and and base. Or, you know, so the middle base, so you've got the agency and the central, and then wisdom, intelligence. Interesting, right? What do you yeah. guys think? What are the chances that a three-letter agency started Bitcoin? I would say pretty high in QTEL. All the different private entities that they funded. Speculation. Don't quit. Can't say for yeah. sure, but. Objection. Speculation. Could certainly see it happening. You know. Unless Hal Finney developed an older ego, how the heck is he suddenly in touch with the anonymous Satoshi Nakamoto and perhaps CIA? First, we must attempt to bridge the connections. If Bitcoin was truly invented by CIA, then how deep down is Bitcoin linked with the other three-letter agencies in the U.S. government? For the longest period of time, Bitcoin trading... Right? For the longest period of time, Bitcoin trading started exclusively in the U.S., from the story of the infamous pizza trading via Bitcoin, which took place yep. in, back in 2010 at in Florida, to PayPal implementing USD to BTC trade options back in 2011. I didn't realize that crypto yep. was a thing like that far back through PayPal. PayPal, by the way, is heavily linked to Palantir Technologies and Peter Thiel, founded by Elon Musk. And Pierre Omidyar. Yeah. Yep. Pay PayPal Mafia, Pay anyone? attention to where all those, the, the six of those Mafia members that are just everywhere now. David Sachs. So, yeah. Who's a lady? I don't know who that is. But well, is a lady one of those? It's a lady. We need to get that on the board. Yep. Does, does that make it's Bitcoin? Tough. That's a tough one to get on the board. I've tried. Really? Oh, it's a lady. Yeah, there's not a good clean take of it. That's, so that sucks. Does uh does that make Bitcoin yeah. essentially <laughs> linked to the latter? Like like Monarch again speculates highly so to Palantir and Teal, which means it probably has links to the CIA because of the amount of soft they're literally running the software that the CIA runs on. We know this through Whitney Webb and her research. Yep. We covered that. Six weeks ago. Value for value. For anyone's indulgence, more information about the first crypto exchange can be found there. Again, this is where the other three-letter agency, and this is the maximum length path of a coin in a system which allows two transfers per coin. All right. He says the other three-letter agency that comes to mind alongside CIA is the NSA, and its dubious origins surrounding the beginnings of Bitcoin and electronic cash. I didn't know any of this either. First conceptualized around 96, the NSA paper, How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash, proposes how future transactions could be executed via digital online banking. Bear in mind, the term here, bank, is heavily referenced to showcase examples of how as early as the 90s, the NSA was interested in a system for users, both the payers and payees, to trust a transaction that would enforce anonymity and payment untraceability. It's weird that they would be looking for that, but examples include transfer of payments among users, electronic wallet, electronic tokens, etc. And he starts to tie this back because I've already started to, to get lost a little bit because I said, OK, so he goes, OK, so what does this have to do with Bitcoin and crypto and more broadly blockchain? It's blockchain. It's cryptocurrency, as some dumbass podcaster we know says. Yeah, Pl plenty, but it's not obvious at first glance. 
well, modern day terms such as proof to work and seed phrases. And who fucking said this shit in the fucking chat? What fucking idiot said something stupid in the chat? I have no idea. But seed phrases and <laughs> decentralization, having, you've heard a lot about Bitcoin and Ethereum having lately, are not mentioned in the NSA paper. The blueprints for designing an electronic cash system featuring such concepts, including coins and privacy, are intact with or without banks. <gasps> Thus, goals of agencies, be it the CIA and or NSA, started in the early 90s and not so much during the 2000s when Bitcoin, particularly Run when... In the 90s. Yeah. Particularly when Bitcoin and Satoshi Nakamoto entered the scenario into the United States as an unknown during the post-financial crisis of 2008. Huh. Yep. Coincidence? Not. One more thing, throwing a wrench out there if on an NSA can save paper. The banks, if, then we can save the world. On the NSA paper, they have somebody referenced by the name of Tatsuki Tat, Tatsukai Okamoto. Well, that that sounds an awful lot like Satoshi Nakamoto. Right? So he says, what happened to Hal Finney? Although he passed in 2014, wow, due to complications of ALS. So Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay. Yeah. The Hawk, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. His body lived on via cryogenics. Alcor Lou light. Gehrig's disease. That, anyway, yeah. it's just it's just the fact that you're calling it Lou Gehrig's disease. So like no one does that anymore. Really? Because you know, that's you're what I'm showing your age a bit. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's ALS, my whole life. Little ice bucket challenge, like yes. a Stephen Hawking disease. Now, if anything, I did. I did the ice bucket know? challenge when I was when I was a shit lib. <laughs> and I, and I was a sheep member of the sheep. Bah. Yeah. Anything to not have to donate? No, I gave the money anyway. Of course we did. But um, <laughs> how finny. All right, so this Alcor Life Extension Foundation, it's a nonprofit organization. They love their nonprofits, the wealthy, were responsible for preserving Hal's body. Both Finney and his wife, Fran, had been members of Alcor for 20 years. The nonprofit organization accepted his donations of Bitcoin to cover the large fraction of the cost. And then four years later in 2018, Alcor accepted a $5 million contribution from Brad Armstrong a crypto entrepreneur, Alcor member, and admirer of, of Hal Finney. More information about Alcor's response to Brad Armstrong's donation can be found here. Again, fascinating stuff, and he's got this all backed up with receipts. So what happened with this large sum of money? Alcor created the Hal Finney Cryonics Research Fund, and their focus is to advance the cryopreservation of brain tissue or whole brains, and uh, or to advance the clinical practice of cryonics, including patient stabilization, transport, and cryopreservation practices. So crypto is paying for cryo now. I thought that was kind of cute. Yeah. Right? And then he talks about James Arrowwood and certainly Bitcoin. Even at present time, current, and C current president and CEO of Alcor... His name is James Arrowwood, and there's a link to his bio there, right, has commented that, well, they don't hold any cryptocurrency because of the volatility of such assets. I think that's funny. The nonprofit does accept it, as it did in the case of BTC donations from their fans, but they convert it into fiat. Why? Nothing wrong here, right? Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. Something is wrong here. First... Those with fake money, like Brad Armstrong, have a bigger say on what the nonprofit will be all about now that you just donated a ton of baseball card money, effectively. Second, Alcor crosses a big line to even think that they can use science to wiggle around life and death. Right? One, one would have to have extremely huge hubris. Huge hubris. Huge. <laughs> Thus far... No current patients of Alcor have come back to life. Um, remember, the whole idea is that they preserve somebody who had been dying of a disease before they die so that they could then be brought back 
somewhat healthy, defrosted, and cured once the disease was cured. Right? Yeah. Third, no current direction. Bitcoin get third current direction. Bitcoin gets worse as more individuals from wealthy status, namely oligarchs, billionaires who stand with capitalism and Zionism, by the way, in order to prep a new digital age involving CBDCs, regardless of what Trump says, he's going to introduce it whether he wants to or not. C C B B C C B D CBDC gummies. CBDCs. That's 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 going to be your digital dollars. <laughs> CBD C CBDGs. All right, that's um, that's your digital wallet coming, where you're going to keep your money, and it may it may or yeah. may involve may or may not involve a bank. It may be directly. Yeah, they just they just want to quit making paper money and have a much easier to control digital one. Sure. So, you know, but. It seems any organization like Alcor does not see the potential plutocratic dystopia that they would indirectly contribute to in the long run. I think they actually might. But for anyone reading this, does Alcor remind you about the shady transhumanist experiments that were supposedly happening on Epstein Island? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let things naturally play out as in natural causes of death instead of pretending to be God by conducting massive warfare and global sickness. Well, yes, absolutely. That's what these sick fucks do. Um, so this further explores, is he Satoshi Nakamoto? And let's break down and kind of give a thesis about this. What similarities, if any, does Hal Finney have with the characteristics of Satoshi Nakamoto, quote unquote? Well, the official homepage of Hal Finney describes a short list of what his plethora of discussions were in the very in a very brief summary the real world consists of wolves and sheep democracy versus libertarianism the need to win political not technological victories in order to protect privacy because politics can potentially destroy privacy just as quickly as technology can, because if they determine it's the law for them to be able to get your get your info, that's why politics does matter here. All right. Then mm. the computer can be used as a tool to liberate and protect people rather than to control them, which is why remailers and, and mentions David Chom, I don't know really what that reference is, is to. Right. And then you've got digital cash is interesting enough, but its beauty is rather abstract, right? Rarity is also hard to evaluate, and that's true. And that's part of, that's the baseball card effect. Like, but there's 21 million that'll ever be made until they decide to have it or do whatever and, and split it or issue a new thing like Bitcoin cash, which they did, right? Mm-hmm. More peculiar. So he says, would Hal Finney in 2024 be opposing corporations and the bought out government? Which is an interesting question to explore because more peculiar discussions of him are found on his homepage. While all of his commentary sounds nice and promising, when we look at where the U.S. is now, late stage capitalism, uh, that is, with government agencies and politicians continuing to deceive the people with false promises, Al Finney's ideas and suggestions go moot and may not matter in the long run. But regarding politics, no information of any could be found about what Al Finney personally thought about the U.S. and other countries that have sanctioned and bullied, have been bullied by the U.S. and its militia. That's interesting. No trace of information from 2000 and onward could be found. Thus, nothing, if anything, about Hal Finney directly speaking to Julian Assange. What would Hal Finney think about the dystopian directions late-stage capitalism is taking America and Western nations towards involving AI, big tech becoming a monopoly, and potentially his pseudonym being used as an exploitative means by Zionist oligarchs and Wall Street vultures to reiterate what cypherpunks like Hal slash Satoshi stood for, but ultimately are after one thing, profit. 
like the underpants gnomes are. All right. Yeah. I love gold. Right. Thus, before Bitcoin and any descending digital cash. Yeah, that guy. But before Bitcoin and any <laughs> descending digital cash ended up ultimately benefiting oligarchs who strongly support Zionism. Before Bitcoin became Zionist Bitcoin, there was Hal Finney and possibly his alter ego, Satoshi Nakamoto. Finney's somewhat ominous background and the future about the future is left entirely up to the individual to decide. If Hal Finney had survived years later, would he be standing alongside the people or would Finney serve as another piece of hog to continue the late stage capitalism and keep it afloat? I think he'd probably be part of the latter as it seems he was already working potentially with Palantir and Teal and all these fuckers already potentially. Mm. But there is no public record of any of his opinions other than basically straight facts. Weird. And with all the in effort put from Alcor to ultimately revive him via cryogenics, is he worth reviving back? <laughs> Respectfully, no. Let Hal and hopefully Satoshi Nakamoto rest. Is the true identity of Satoshi Nakamoto worth debunking at this time? Well, no, not at this time. I I'd like to know, but although no public community would ever directly approve so-called secret projects, he were involved in, be it electronic, ca <clears throat> electronic cash or peer-to-peer -peer blockchain, there was a moment of time where people could have seen the benefits of blockchain technology, but without the technology being heavily compromised by corporate greed and politics. I think that's like kind of dreamer or, you know, the, I can control it. We can, we can control it. As it stands, people here in the U.S. and elsewhere globally are still struggling, working multiple jobs, cannot financially secure themselves via assets and retirement, while prices of nearly everything continues rising. How, how can a majority of people even find themselves to be distracted with waiting for a cypherpunk man to be revived? Like, yeah, the, there's more important things to worry about right now, and certainly more and more people are starting to recognize that Advanced technology and digital currencies, potentially of first world origins under imperialism hands such as Zionists, have no intention to helping anyone but the oligarchs. And any government agency with three letters do not directly serve the people and their essential needs. And they could potentially be involved in the creation, the administration, and the control, and the, one of the larger holders of Bitcoin. We don't know. We know the U.S. government's been acquiring it, but we also, did they create it? Good piece, Golden Monarch. I think there's a lot of questions there, too. There's a lot of thought-provoking yeah. stuff in that article. Um, again, I'm gonna go, I want to go back and I want to show the, the graphic that breaks down even Sa with the symbols. Look at how the symbols look like they could potentially be that that's like an H. Right there, and then you've got it, like kind of an A. That's that's an L, F, and then the I, N, one N, and that definitely mm -hmm. looks like an E and a Y. So you do like that crypto. And remember, the guy was a cryptologist, so he would cut. He would yeah. be into making weird symbolic shit like that. And what would my name look like in Japanese? You know, and that's actually yeah. the way that Sa. To she na ka mo to. Those are the symbols in like in katakana or hiragana tra traduction in Japanese. So that's crazy. You're crazy. That's crazy, dude. That's good stuff. That's good conspiracy theory shit right there. All right. Um. All right. So. Yes, Ted Williams, last one to hit over 400, Dave Burt. That's a good one right there. Scanners exploding heads. He's got that one too, 1981. Awesome, awesome. Over on the rock pin. Anna Mares, I see, is over there too. She's 
prestige worldwide, bitches, because we definitely dropped a, a Step Brothers reference there. It's a fucking Catalina wine mixer. Yeah. That's right, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Thomas Bye Black. Me. Right. So, yeah, we got Dave over there. John, I feel like I'm watching Tin Rabbit. Oh, oh, well, I guess I... And this show's been around for three years, so Tin Rabbit might be might have been kind of copying How Do We Miss That maybe a little bit, and that's an homage, and I appreciate that. That's good stuff. Love what the uh, what Incredible. Mastermind and Cookies are doing over there and, and his lady. They do a good show, everybody says, and I've watched a couple of them for sure. Um, you didn't follow the White Rabbit, took a detour. Very funny, Mr. And Mr. Anderson. Awesome. All right, so we got a bunch of great people here in chat. I have a couple of more, or one more article, and then we've got a couple quick things, then we'll get out of here. So before we do that, I forgot to do this last time. If you are able at all and you got a couple of bucks, we could really use the support. We showed you the John Pilger cartoon illustration from Zago Brothers. We have all the illustrations. Um, we need to raise some more some more cash to hook him up and finish paying him off. And we're excited to be able to do that. And again, any media awards will be out probably sometime. I'm targeting the end of October. So sometime in the next seven, eight weeks, if not sooner. But we will let you know. And uh, that's cool. But in the meantime, all these awesome people either subscribe, support. They, they, they contributed. Uh, via Cash App, via co-fee.com slash Indie News Network, PayPal, Rumble, Substack, Patreon.com slash Indie News Network. We got a few Patreon. De Deborah, I, I saw hooked us up a couple weeks ago. Thank you so much and welcome to the INN family, Deborah. 